In an empty rack, let's right-click and bring in an instance of the NM19 uh, digital sampler. So, just like normal, we can scroll through the various patches here. But what we're actually doing is browsing through a collection of real individual samples, real sounds laid out across the keyboard right here. Now, to, to in true fashion like we've been doing, let's see how this all works by right-clicking and initializing a patch. And you'll notice that there's absolutely nothing that's going to be played because there's no samples brought up underneath the keyboard here. Now, this area here is where you load up complete patches. This area here is where you load up individual samples. Let's click on this and we'll go to one of my favorite folders, which is, which is Synth Raw Elements. And we can go down to Mini Moog and let me bring in, say, the second square right here. Now what we have here, if we just turn this down here, is a raw sample of a real Mini Moog synth that'll set you back probably about $2,500 second hand if you're lucky enough to find one on eBay. You have the raw sound of it right here. And using some of the skills that we've seen before, we could make up a bass sound pretty easily, like a pretty cool Moog bass sound. If I drop this down, maybe an octave, cool here, and then maybe, Dull that down, add a little bit of resonance. Let me just scroll up a little bit here so we can see it. Add a little bit of a mount so the envelope here can just swell that filter up a little bit. Maybe we can add just a little bit of release on the amp envelope so it doesn't... It's a little too long. So with a little bit of tweaking, we a pretty good bass sound. Did you just get this, what happened right there? I took the raw waveform that was recorded from an actual $2,500 Mini Moog, brought it up on my keyboard, and with a few tricks that we learned from the synth tutorials, I was able to make a pretty cool bass sound. But the thing is, with a sound like this, It'll stretch right across the keyboard very well. Let's try doing the same thing with an acoustic instrument. With a synth sound like this, you can hear it stretches pretty well. And all that NN19 is actually doing is speeding up the playback of the sample to change that pitch and track with your keyboard. Let's initialize this patch. Right click and initialize. And we'll do the same thing, only this time with a piano sound. So let me scroll up here. Oh, sorry, go to the N19 uh, piano, bright piano, and select C3. Okay. Sounds pretty good. That's the sound of a real piano here. But what's going to happen if I play it, say, down an octave? <laughs> not convincing. What about above? Definitely not convincing. What the NN19 is doing is taking that sample uh, that was originally taken at uh, from a middle C on a real piano and speeding it up and slowing it down to uh, track its pitch from the keyboard. From my audio training, I remember all the way back there, you learned that if you halve the fundamental frequency by half, you'll drop the sound down an octave, double it, the sound goes up an octave. So the NN19 is basically doing some pretty basic math to work out how to play back that sound so that the pitch tracks with the keyboard. But with the case of an acoustic sound that we all know and love, like an acoustic piano, the results, they're not that convincing. So how do you get a convincing piano right across the keyboard? Well, the trick is you take a bunch of samples of the real piano at small intervals up the keyboard. That's actually what all these samples are right here for. We could load up a C4 sample, but actually before we do that, let me just cancel out of that. And I can either right click or underneath the edit menu do the same thing. I can split the key zone. So now we have two different key zones that are mapped across our keyboard. The first one here has our original sample in there. The second zone here has no samples in there. So as soon as I start getting into that zone, we'll actually hear nothing until we load something in there. So let's load up a sample. C4, and everything should be fine, right? Except this one here has jumped two octaves. I actually need to change the root key of this sample to match C4. Now let's hear it. Much better. 
The root key is the key on the keyboard where the sample will be played back at its natural pitch. It's basically how the sample will play back with no pitch shifting at all. So now with that set up, the C4 here, instead of playing back the old C3 sample twice as fast, bringing all those Mickey Mouse artifacts in there, C4 is playing a totally different sample, a real recording of a piano played at C4 with no pitch shifting here. So you can see how difficult it is to make a convincing acoustic piano sound. The best ones use a different sample uh, for almost every key right across the keyboard. Now, you also might note that the sound of a piano uh, changes depending on how hard you hit the key. It doesn't, doesn't just get louder. That's pretty easy to do. The piano also sounds very diff uh, different depending on how hard you hit it. It gets brighter and it has a different sound. Now, if you could, you might want to make sure you had enough samples across the keyboard to accurately represent the pitch. Also, enough samples at different velocity depths, like how hard you hit the key. And that, I'm afraid, is where we part company with the NN19 because there's really no way of doing that, like having different samples play back at different velocity levels. Now, I wish there was a way that a sample playback device could do that. Hmm, that'd be the NNXT.